So today, uh, I thought this would be a fun little thing to share with you. Uh, how do you uh, basically translate something that's intangible uh, to something where people can visualize it? They can see themselves using your, your product or service. Well, it's all about making that come to life. And how do we do it? Uh, you know, we've all seen it using... Um, you know, these different templates on Canva and so forth. Yay. Hey, Mary, glad you can see me. All right. Uh, just wanted to make sure that you can hear me. So what I wanted to do today was just to uh, walk through the process. It's really a simple process and it's kind of addicting because it's fun to do. And what prompted me that I should do this, do, uh, I've done this training before, but Canva has actually released a new little application that makes it even easier. But now let me say I could not get the application to work for me yesterday, but doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you or in the future. Uh, it will. So I'm going to be showing you that. And just as a reminder, if you are in my Digital Business Academy, that's my premier group, you get a whole suite of all of these templates. And if you're in my DBA Prep School membership, uh, you get a nice little uh, digital packet. That's our monthly drop. And uh, for those of you that are just watching inside of my Facebook group, um, at the end, I've got a little opt-in form and you can snag a couple of the, a uh, couple of my favorite templates for you. All right. So again, the purpose, why do we go to this trouble to make what I call these digital stacks. When you have, I like to say, a nice juicy digital stack, it gets people to take action. So when I think of juicy, I love strawberries, right? And so those fresh picked strawberries, they're glistening, they're bright red, you just cannot wait to bite into it. And when you are building your product, your service, if you kind of start at the end, start at that end result, what do you want this to look like? So again, I must be hungry because all I'm thinking about is food, but if I was going to sell a cherry pie, what would I want that pie to look like, right? And so I designed this beautiful packaging so that you could see what that cherry pie looks like. So when we are designing our product, our service, our offer, whatever it is, think about how can we design this beautiful package and it's the mock-up. All right. Is that making sense? So kind of start at the end result. And once you get that built, when you plug it into your landing page, your sales page, all of that kind of stuff, it makes it super easy for you. All right. And I'm just going to walk through how uh, easy it is. Uh, and when you use these templates, it's uh, super easy. And then I'm just going to share some uh, some tips with you, things that I've learned along the way. So let me uh, share my screen here and hopefully you will be able to see what I'm going to show you. All right, let me refresh the screen over here. So you should be uh, seeing the Canva. Perfect. All right. So um, when you, first of all, let, let me start out. You can search uh, elements in Canva and just look for mock-ups. And there's all kinds of mock-ups that you can use. The, the key is you want to, if you put these little frames over them, they, they kind of look like the little picture frames. It's so easy because then you can just drop in your picture, uh, your uh, JPEG, and just goes from there. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Um, and I think, let me, let me just open up, actually, I'm going to just open up a new uh, Canva, and we're just going to go from uh, scratch here. And let me see, is this, does it refresh? Um, maybe not. Can you, can you see this blank screen now with Canva? I might be locked into just one. Oh, you can. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to, it's not really a custom size, but I'm just going to, um, is it 1080 by 1080? I think, yep. 
that's just the square post, all right? So we're just going to start with a plain old uh, white piece of paper, all right? <laughs> Excuse me. And if you go over here to the left to elements, and if you type in mock-up, here's a computer mock-up, and there are several little mock-ups that come up. So if I just click to see all, and I will just click on one here, all right? So here, here's your computer. Now, I had said, if you use a frame inside, it makes your image just pop right into it. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna switch back here. So here in this frame, you'll see that I've already got these little, um, if you just think of like a, a picture frame, it's there ready to hold the picture. When you put the frame there, it's a lot easier. So let, let me show you what I'm talking about. So on this uh, page here, and hopefully Facebook is keeping up. I think the delay is just a little slow. Uh, if I go to my images, so over here on the left, if I click on uploads, so I, I have different uh, images that I've uploaded, okay? So I'm just going to grab one and I'm gonna bring it over. Now, because I don't have a frame there, do you notice it's it wants to like take over that whole picture? So if you, I think it's the control key or the shift key or the alt key, you just have to kind of play around depending on what your uh, device is. You just, it's difficult, okay? You, you have to like get it on the canvas, but not on that picture. And then you can kind of shrink it down, um, and then, you know, play with the size, all that kind of stuff. All right. So that's what happens when you don't have the little frame. All right. So is, is that making sense what I'm saying? So if I come back over here to one that has the frame, now if I come over to my uploads and I grab a uh, picture, and I'm just going to drag it. Do you see how it just kind of popped into place? So you don't have to fight with it as much. And I'm just going over uh, to the to my uploaded images. Uh, let's see if I can find one that's the right size. It's the other thing you need to think about, is this a portrait or a landscape? Okay, so you can see how easy that is. All right, just pops right into place and you're uh, good to go. So if I'm gonna just grab this, of course, this is totally not making sense, but uh, as far as what I'm offering here, but you can see it just snaps it into place. So how do you um, get like these images? So I had created, let me come back over here and. Uh, add, let's see, let me come back over here to Canva. Let me just go home here. I had created a little uh, magazine cover. Okay, so this, this is a uh, page and it has all of these little elements, has my picture, all of that kind of stuff. So this was my starting place. So the key is uh, once you get your design perfect, then what you have to do is you have to download this. So let me move this out of the way. So if you can see up here at the top under share and then click download, and I usually recommend JPEG. And depending on where you want to put this, I bump up the size. Usually I double the size. Okay. And then the quality. And then I download it. So I have created my design. Then I've saved it, downloaded it as a JPEG. So we have to do that first. And then when we come back over, 
Let's get to the right tab here. When we come back over here, so then if I wanted to use that, one of the examples I have is a book cover. Let me find uh, like the book cover here. So if I wanted to use that on my book cover, I'm just going to copy that. And I will just come over here to my new design, <clears throat> wherever it went. <clears throat> I think it's here. Uh, too many things open. Um, is it not copying? Yeah. Anyway, let me just come back here. I didn't want to mess this up, but uh, once I've downloaded that image, then I come back and I over here to the left on my uploads, I upload that JPEG. So I'll just copy it here. And now you can see, I can just put it right on that template and it makes it that easy. If I wanna put it over here on this one, that's got the little page that's turned over. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, what I wanted to show you is Canva just recently um, released this new app and make sure that you can see this. Uh, so when you're in Canva, if you click on apps and I think you have to search for it. So just type in apps and here's all of these different apps that they're connected with. And there's one called design to image. The other day, it did not work for me, but I've seen it work for other people. And then you tell it either use it on an existing design or in a new design. And what it does is it saves that one extra step of creating your image, then downloading it, then turning turn around and upload it again. Okay, does that make sense what I said? So in the past, or if you can't get it to work right now, you create your image, you download it as a JPEG, then you upload it again, then you can use it in, I'm just gonna close this because I keep uh, clicking on the wrong, wrong ones. Then you upload it, then you just put it in here. So I think once they work out the bugs on this, it just, eliminates that middle step. Uh, as of right now, uh, it only works per page. And I'm guessing it probably depends on how heavy of a graphic that page is. The one that I created with that uh, magazine cover is pretty heavy. So, you know, maybe the image is too big. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Liz, it's good to see you. I know Canva just keeps adding on. Look at all these different uh applications that they're connected with. I haven't even played with uh, most of them. It's amazing. But I was super excited about this uh, design to image because I use uh, these mock-ups all the time. All right. So I wanted to show you that. Now let's come back over here and uh, let me just um, talk about some of these uh, mock-ups. Again, the reason we use a mock-up is we want to help people visualize what they're getting. So if you have a course or a webinar or something that uh, helps people see that you know, you've got something tied to the computer, uh, it's nice to use a mock-up of the computer. If it is mobile friendly, so, you know, maybe whatever it is, people can use it on their phone, then that's always a good thing uh, also, because you're, you're uh, communicating to them that they don't have to be tied to the computer, all right? So let's just, uh, and again, see how easy that is? I just click and drag over. Once you've got it on the frame, if you double click, then you can move things around depending on how big that image is so that you can place it just so, all right? So here, 
uh, if I was advertising my uh, business hub. And again, if you're part of my uh, DBA membership, uh, you get this inside of there. Uh, we can see that, okay, this is something that you use on the computer, but notice I put it on the phone, meaning it's super easy to use it on the phone also. And then uh, if I have different handouts that go along with it, I'll just drag these little images and there. And so do you see how people are visualizing right off the bat, oh, this is really great. I'm going to love it. So I'll just uh, open up a couple of these for you. So there's all different uh, ideas, ways that you can use uh, these images. Another thing that I like to do that I think is very powerful, and especially if you are, uh, so, so maybe you're designing things to sell. Maybe you do sell uh, some of these templates and stuff, or uh, you want to call out a specific uh, feature of that, then using little call outs, again, will help people visualize the benefit, help people to understand why a particular thing is important for them. All right. So if I come back over here, in this particular spreadsheet, when you click on the tabs here to the far left, it jumps you to the column uh, that you want. So in the in the call out here, I could mention that benefit one click easy access to your information or whatever you want to do. All right. Is that making sense? Then um, another thing that you want to think about is how rich uh, is this packet of goodies that you're giving them, all right? So uh, the more, I hate to say the more stuff, but when people buy your products, buy your courses, buy your coaching service, you want to present them the whole buffet of things. So when you create a mock-up that looks like this, then what is it translating? It's translating one, that they can use it on their computer, their laptop. They're seeing all of these yummy little uh, handouts that they're getting. They're realizing that they can use their phone phone, they can use their iPad, uh, all of that. So I love the kind of the digital stack of those um, pages that you create. And when you're creating a workbook, I've got tons of workbooks in here. So let me just find one that I can show you. Um, again, you're giving people a sneak peek of what's involved. Because once they taste it, once they see it, they actually, let me put this page there. Do you see how quick this is when you use these templates? So once people see that content, they, they want to get their hands on it. Now, let me address an objection that some people have. Sometimes people say, but I don't want to show them everything because then they're just going to steal the idea. They're going to blow up the image. And my philosophy is the more you give them, the closer they're going to step to you. Information is abundant on the internet. Information is not guarded anymore. It's out there. Uh, but the more transparent you are, what you're doing is you're creating a curated package of information plus your expertise, plus the way you deliver it. And so the you're removing a barrier of risk because they're saying, yes, I want to, I need this. And then you're showing them everything that you've given them. All right. Um, Liz says, uh, where would we find a specific mock-up? Oh, I'd like to have a three ring binder mock-up to show how my course, oh yeah, that the printables can be added to a binder. That is an excellent uh, question. Let's, um, I think, I think I had found, so like here, here is um, one, now, I'm not for sure if this came from Canva or someplace else, but here is like a little uh, notebook. So let me just go to uploads and uh, 
guess we'll just drag in a couple. Now these are actually made um it's like double fold it's kind of goofy how it's uh you have to place it just right uh to get it to show up okay maybe maybe that's not the best example here but anyway uh yes so you could start by searching on the uh elements in canva uh, so let's just say three ring binder mock-up and let's just see what it comes up with now, uh, huh, that, that's interesting. So it gives you the little, that's kind of cute. It gives you the little three ring binder that you could actually kind of build your own. Uh, most of these are just pictures. But like, here's, here's one uh, you could... And then what you would have to do is place your image right inside of there. Let's see if there's anything else. I'll keep I'll keep looking. Here's some other uh, magic recommendations. So you would just have to play with it because of the rings on it uh, to make sure that the little rings don't get um, covered over. Okay. All right, good question. Yay. Uh, so what else was I going to say? Uh, let me see if there's some other things I was going to talk about. So your imagination, you know, whatever you come up with, I think this one is a fun one here. And this, again, if you come over to, if you don't see exactly what you want, uh, when you just type in frames, of course, it's not going to find the right one. Here it is. Just type frames and you'll see all of these different types of frames here. So this one where it's got the little uh, three by four grid, uh, there's a grid someplace in all of these frames here. So this is just an iPad and then they put the grid right on top of it. And then you could just put in your individual little pictures there, right? I mean, how powerful is that? I just think it's so fun. Now, what I do whenever I'm uh, designing a, let me find one that's kind of busy, oh, this one. Whenever I'm working, and creating my uh, digital stack, what I will do, first of all, uh, any of my templates, everything else, I always make a copy of the entire thing. And then, uh, okay, so this, let's say this is the page that I want to work on. I'll make it as large as possible so it's easy just to kind of snap in those pictures, all right? If I wanted, so here I've got five pages of text and maybe I wanted another five pages of text up here. The What I would first do is I would uh, duplicate the page. Okay, so now I've got two pages identical. And the, um, the reason I like to do that is if I uh, goof up something and sometimes I will come in here and I will select some of the elements and I will start deleting, okay? Just so I can get this uh, little spread. And then I'm going to just copy all of this, copy it, and then come back over here to my like original page and I can paste it in I'm just going to, I don't know, let's do it this way, uh, like that. Right now, they're all grouped together. And then I've got to select it. I'm going to come up here to position, and I'll say to the back. Okay, so now I've got like a double digital spread. It's probably too high up. I probably should have tilted it the other way. Okay, so you get what I mean, though, right? So, uh, um Again, I will start with one of these pages. I'll make a copy, first of all, of everything. And then I might duplicate the page and 
pull out or add to the things that I want. And then once I have it just right, then at this point, I will come over to my uploads and I will start adding all of the individual pages to that. Okay. So uh, let's see if there's any other ones here I was going to show you. So you, you get the idea when you're looking at all of these different assets here, uh, it just makes it seem richer as far as what it is that you're offering. And uh, if, if I have something that I'm really, um, you know, like I really want to get it perfect, I will pull out that element. So here is... Uh, the iPad. So I have pulled it out and I've made it as big as possible. And, you know, I just want to play around with the placement of that particular thing. Once I get it just so, I'll do the same thing. I'll select everything, make a copy, and then come back over to the one that I'm working on and put it there. All right. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is... Um, so here, here's another one, simple but powerful, okay? Because right away, people can see those handouts that they're going to get. Something else that I suggest that you do is start collecting uh, what I call additional elements. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a scene. So think about a play. Uh, I have no acting. I'm, you know, never did it in high school or anything else. But and I don't even know what they call those people. But their their whole job is building the scenes, right? The sets. So instead of just kind of a plain set, what can you add to it? to help people visualize their feeling, to help them visualize them actually working on it, and just start collecting some of these little elements. So I am going to copy this little uh, coffee cup here, and I'm gonna come here and I'm going to pay, whoops, wrong one. Let me see, did I not copy it? Let me copy it. Let me come back over here. Maybe my, let's try it again. Copy. Maybe my mouse is misbehaving. Pace. Whew, that was painful. <laughs> okay. So, so now all of a sudden we have this little cappuccino or latte and again, people can visualize themselves even more working with whatever it is that you've given them. Now, let me come over to uh, this little page and um, I don't know, let me just take this one. I'm going to copy it and I will come back over here and I'm going to paste it. So now here's my uh, little vase of flowers and I'm just going to make it. And, you know, I try to make things realistic and then based on how you place them. So the coffee cup and the flowers are on top of the computer. So it makes it more uh, realistic. I should have, um, I should have made a copy of this page so we could see the, the before and after, but that's okay. Let me, do I have any pages that kind of match this? Let me just add some pages here. And uh, so, sometimes, I don't know, um, sometimes maybe you don't have enough pages. So if you kind of move your pages around back and forth, it gives the illusion, uh, you know, that you've got more stuff there. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't like that one. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, another little word of advice. Do you notice how these pages, these two here, let me make it bigger so you can see it. One thing that I've learned, I don't always do it, but see how we have that pink border there? 
this one doesn't it just is a white when you are making your like handouts think about putting a border of color along the edge or the top or the bottom because when you build these digital stacks it just catches the eye and makes it it just makes it seem more appealing uh, that, you know. Uh, so anyway, just a little tip for you there. So now let me shrink this down a little bit. So now, I mean, doesn't this look visually more appealing? Okay, somebody's sitting at their desk, they're drinking their coffee, uh, they're using my wonderful profit and loss uh, spreadsheet here. Again, another plug for DBA members because they get a copy of that. They just pick some flowers from their garden and all of a sudden they can visualize using this. So when you make these mock-ups, then what do you do with it? Depending on, so if I was doing like a social media post, then, you know, you might have like a colored background and some details. Download now. Uh, hey, the spreadsheet includes four tabs or free or or whatever it is. Uh, you would want to make something that looks like this. OK, because it's it's uh, like a standalone picture. If you are building these to go on your sales page or your landing page, you just want this image. You can have all of these little additional goodies, but you won't need words or anything because the words will fit underneath uh, or on top. And for this page, what you do, let me move my head over here, when you go to download it, in this instance, if you have the paid version of Canva, you want to download it as a PNG so that you can have the transparent background. And I always double the size. And the reason I do that is then uh, if I shrink it down, I don't lose any of my uh, resolution. And then I'm not gonna download the 30 pages, but I would pick just this page. And then this particular, uh, image, all the white space is gone, but on the sales page, it just plugs, excuse me, plugs right in. All right. Is that making sense? All right. So um, here's, here's a little mock-up that um, I did for the DBA prep school. Uh, again, if you're a member of that, you get um, a suite of some of these uh, awesome little goodies here. So on this one, I put what we call a, a background image. And if you've never used a background image, let me, uh, what I love about the background image, let me change this to white, get rid of that. So let me just, um, I'm just gonna type in background image. I like to use something that's just kind of, uh, subtle. So, but I want to be able to show you. Okay, I'll just use this one. So I find a picture that I want. And then if I right mouse click and say set image as background. So it's there. It's like it's glued and it, it won't go any place. All right, so I love using background images. So here I created a background image. It's this little hexagon uh, beehive thing, whatever it's called, I forget. And then what I also did was when you click on it, you can come up here to the transparency and turn the transparency down. So it's, you know, real faint. And then you just start building uh, your mock-up. And so in this instance, I've got a, you know, little uh, blue banner here. I put some pictures on. I've got different kind of type here, my logo and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, how fun uh, is that? Now, you can even take it a step further uh, if you are, again, creating a social media uh, image, you could add animation. Uh, 
just be cautious with the animation because if you have too much, it almost makes you feel kind of seasick, okay? Uh, and I'm not going to go into that uh, for this training, but again, think about that if you want animation just to get, you know, like the words could like uh, kind of bounce down the page or something to get people to pay attention to it, all right? So why do we want to go to the trouble of making these uh, what I call my digital stacks? Because we're helping people visualize the end result. So when they get your, uh, you know, whether it's a freebie or a paid product, uh, let me bring up this one, they can see themselves using it, they can see all the goodness, they're kind of seeing a sneak peek, and they say, yes, this is what I need. And when you start adding these extra elements, then it helps put them into the scene. And a super quick recap, when you're first building this, what do you want to do if you use the frames on top of the mock-ups. It makes it super easy because you can just grab those images that you have and it just clicks right into place and then it uh, makes it easy. So you'll, you'll create whatever that picture or image or uh, if you have your handouts, you save them as JPEGs, individual pages as JPEG, and then either you upload it or once Canva gets this little app working perfectly, the design to image, then it automatically is in your uploads here and you just start building uh, your digital stack. And then there you go. And again, what I suggest is work in backwards order, create your digital stack first. And a couple of reasons you want to do that is it forces you to think about the handouts and the tangible stuff that people are getting. Uh, so you create all that stuff first, and then you build this digital stack, and then you can start uh, building the sales page or the uh, landing page and you can talk about so just like on this well why is this important it's important because and then you explain the benefit of that all right good so uh if um Oh, Susan said, what is the app again yes thanks for uh, asking that so when you're in Canva click on apps and you might have to search the word apps, and you're looking for design to image. Uh, again, I tried it yesterday. I couldn't get it to save. Uh, maybe my image was too big or maybe too many people were using it. I'm going to continue trying it because it saves that middle step. If you can't get it to work, all you have to do is save that individually, like you can build your whole um, uh, a worksheet, you know, let's say you've got 10 sheets, you can create everything, download all of them as JPEG, and it will create individual pages, then you have to upload those pages back upload those images, you just drag them over to your uploads, and then you've got them here, and then you can just start using them. All right. Great. Okay. Well, uh, for everybody that's on live, thanks for watching. Uh, I think I've, uh, thanks, Liz. Good to see you. Thanks, Susan, uh, Kathy. Um, anyway, any questions, just reach out in the uh, Facebook group. I will post a link uh, for those of you that's not in my memberships, uh, a little goodie bag for you to leave with. Um, I think there's three or four Canva templates. Um, so all you need to do is sign up for that and you'll have that in your uh, little uh, packet. And let me know, share in the Facebook group. I would love to see what uh, your little digital images look like. Okay, well, as always, thanks everybody for watching live. Uh, this was fun since I'm using Zoom. Now I just need to uh, figure out how to stop Zoom. All right.